Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at this Wintech saddle. It's one of the old style Wintechs and we're going to be dissecting it, looking inside it and seeing what we can find. So if you're interested in these older Wintechs, if you've got a burning desire to look inside of one of them, then sit back, make yourselves a cup of tea and hopefully enjoy. Today I've got a pumpkin with me. So a lot of you have asked about pumpkin because she's had an operation recently so I brought her in to say hello. She's meant to be on box rest and recuperating and you can see here she's had her little bum shaved. So she's looking a bit daft with these pom-pom legs. She is I promise you still alive and well and a happy little bean and your pumpkin. And she would love to stay here for the whole video but she's not allowed. Today we're going to be looking at this old style Wintech saddle. Um, I get asked all the time about dissecting a Wintech saddle and I've been holding out because I've been looking for an old unwanted one with care in it, like the air panels in it, because this one's a flocked one. But I haven't found one yet so I thought I'll do this flocked one first and then another day I'll get an air one and we'll do an air one and then maybe even one day get an air and a flocks and show them together. So hope you're sitting comfortably and we're going to get cracking on this. I'd also like to thank Equiboodle, if anyone's heard of Equiboodle making these fabulous hair bands because my hair at the moment with lockdown and no hairdressers it's beyond crazy it's like I wake up every morning and I look like Bob Marley on a bad day got dreadlocks it's gone all so my hair is being covered by a lovely Equiboodle headband we're gonna get a crack I'm gonna take pumpkin back put her in our bed and we're going to get started on looking inside this saddle. So this one was given to me by a customer because it's faulty. But I'll show you the fault on it because it's quite a common thing that goes on these saddles so it's always worth checking if you have one of these to check your one to see if yours has gone too. Say goodbye pumpkin. Bye bye. I've seen you again. I would usually do one of these videos in the workshop because it's a little bit better placed for dissecting saddles because I can stand up on my workbench at the right place. But if I'm honest, it's the weekend. I want to sit down. This here is my office and I love my office. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's full of all my stuff, my lovely stuff. So here is the saddle in question. It's one of the old style, one of the little Wintech GP saddles. Can you see it here? It's a brown one, this one. And it's a flocked panel, not an air panel. And how do we know that? That's because on this style of Wintex, when it's an air panel, it has a little badge here that says CARE, C-A-I-R. This one doesn't have the badge, therefore it's got flocking in it. It's a flocked saddle. It will be interesting to see the sort of flocking that's inside this saddle when we get it opened up. Now the first thing I always check when I go to see one of these saddles is the girth straps. Well, there's actually there's the two main things I check when I go to see the saddles. Number one is the girth straps, because I don't know if you can see that there, but the girth straps are synthetic and they've got a real tendency to crack. So I often recommend to people that have these saddles just to get leather straps put on them because they do up more easily, they don't crack like this and when it's cracked it doesn't mean it's unsafe really because it's got webbing inside which is really strong but it does make it very difficult to do your girth up, it gets in the way and it just feels a bit more and unsightly. The other thing about the girth straps, I don't know if anyone has one of these saddles has noticed, but the first hole is really high up. So like if you've got a horse that struggles to get the girth done up, Sometimes you can get that if you can't get it onto the first hole because the first hole is miles away. So most straps, the first hole is a bit lower down. So, go straps on these. Um, I don't think they're the best if I'm on a second. I'm not saying the saddle themselves are crap. But, you know, there's definitely a place in the market for these saddles, but the girth straps I don't think are very good. I don't like the synthetic straps because I always think that leather straps are important, easy to do up, they don't crack. But most importantly, having a leather strap means that there is a break point on your saddle. So if you're, I always use this as an example, I know if we're bored of it, but if you're galloping across the countryside and you get your leg or your saddle or your stirrup or something caught on a gate post, for example, you want there to be a break point on your saddle and leather straps break. We want girth straps to break. We don't want them to break willy-nilly when we're just trotting around the arena, but we do want them to be a break point and leather does break under extreme pressure, whereas these plastic with webbing inside don't break. 
they crack like this, but they don't break and give way for safety. So that's the first thing I check. The second thing I check on these saddles, and we're gonna see that this one is broken as well. So we've got cracked girth strap, and then also the points. So the points of the tree are here, where the point of the tree comes in, it's got a little pocket, and on these saddles, they're prone to cracking. This one here has cracked, we'll see when we take it out. The one on the other side is intact, but this one here is cracked. And what that means is there's more flex through this side of the tree than that side of the tree, because this one, the point has broken. Now we wanna have flex here, but we don't wanna have an even amount of flex because then it means the saddle can slip off. So if you've got one of these saddles and your saddle starts to slip off to one side, check your points. And I'll show you the points in a minute where they are when we pull it to bits. But yeah, there's definitely more movement there than there is there. Can you see? So I just wanna do the front of these. They have a little screw at the front here. Once we've unscrewed the front, we need to take the front off. So we have a strong belt right at the front here. Pull that belt come up. Pull that off the point. So this here is the point of the tree. Can we see it's got like a plastic plate? It's a bit cracked this one, but it's intact. And then we pull it off this one. And we can see that this one here is actually broken. It's come off. There's no point. Ooh, it's not even in the pocket. Usually you find the little broken bit in the pocket, but this one must have been broken for a while by the looks of things. So this here is the point that was in the point pocket, but has broken. So this is what makes them flex on one side more than the other. And this is what you need to check. If you have one of these saddles, check them regularly, because as we can see by that one there, they do crack. And as we can see by this one here, they do break. And you don't want a cracked one or a broken one because it means that the saddle sits unevenly when it breaks. So that there are the points. And this here is a gullet bar. See this white bit here? Because in the front of these saddles, there are adjustable gullets. So this is the easy change. It's called gullet bar. And that's what we change when we decide how wide to make the saddle. This is a white one, therefore an extra wide. And now we're going to take the rest of the saddle off. We're going to take the back panels off. So another thing about these saddles here is they have like a plastic bit of like, oh, it's like supporting stuff, I guess, around the back here. And can we see here that this is already broken? And they're very prone to cracking and breaking. And this is, tends to be how they break because when people change the gullet bar, they bend this back and it puts a lot of strain on these little plastic bits here. And can we see here when we pull this back? So most saddles are like a leather saddle would be stitched around here. These are kind of stapled into these little plastic supporting bits. They're sort of, st they're sort of stapled in. They're actually quite easy to pull the panel off. There's about 85 bazillion staples in here. It's a bit licky. So here we go, we have the saddle now into two separate bits. This is the tree and the top flaps, and this is the panels, the squishy bit, and the sweat flaps. So, which bit should we look at first? Which one should we look at first? Should we look at the panel? Mm. We'll look at the tree first, because that's gonna make loads of flocking go everywhere. So this is the tree of the saddle. They are, on a plastic tree, so uh, most saddles are, oh, most saddles, a lot of the traditional saddles, shall we say, the more, tradition, the more traditional saddles in the world are on wooden trees. This is a plastic tree. The majority of the very adjustable saddles, so the ones that you can adjust with gullet bars at the front, tend to be plastic trees because they work better with a plastic saddle, with a plastic tree. Let's have a little look in here. So we can see here that the tree is just like basically a solid sheet of plastic. Yep. With the gullet bar at the front, which just gives it the structure and gives it the strength here at the front, but also determines its width. There's a little flap, the flap of the Wintex saddle. That's off. And we can see here the seat. And this here is called the skirt. And this is a stirrup bar. 
So on these saddles they've got this, it's quite a hook stirrup bar. So you can get the ones that are like straight with a little flippy up bit, or you can get these little hooks. This is a little hook bar, and it's attached to this little plastic tree. Inside the seat, so the seat is made of the synthetic material covering, covering this bit here, which is a bit of foam. Which is really hard to cut. And the foam in your saddle, in these saddles, is about five eighths, no, a bit more than that, seven eighths of an inch thick. And then under that foam, we can see the tree. So that is your tree. It's a plastic tree here. It's a plastic tree here. And for the seat, it's just got a layer of foam over the top. So there's like there's a little bit of flex in the tree, but not very much. Whereas some of these plastic trees have got a lot of flex. So I did a video a little while ago about the GFS saddles, and they've got a plastic tree in them, but they've got a huge amount of flex through here. So these are quite big. They're quite not very flexy, and because they've got that, and because they're solid, as in they're kind of plastic the whole way across, um, it also means that they don't have much give under the seat bones. So the comfort you get from these saddles isn't from the tree kind of giving and having a spring underneath your seat, it's from the foam you get in the saddle. So if you find these saddles comfy, it's the foam that you're finding comfy, it's definitely not the tree itself. Now let's talk very quickly about adjustable saddles because this here is adjustable. Here, that white bar there means that we can change the width of this saddle whenever we want to. So we can take it from a narrow to an extra wide an infinite number of times, no problem whatsoever. So does that mean that these saddles will fit every single horse in the world? Does it? The answer to that question is no. It will only fit a horse that the tree fits. So the horse has to be the right shape for the tree and then it's adjustable in the front because an extra wide horse tends to have a flatter back, no withers, not always by the way, this is just generalising, but an extra wide horse will tend to have no withers, a flatter back, straighter back, whereas something that's a narrow fit for example will tend to have higher withers, a little bit more shape to the back, slightly more A-frame so when you look at them behind they're a little bit more A-frame through their back. There's not many back shapes that say the same from narrow to an extra wide. When we change this bar here, what it changes is the width at the front. You can see here that this bar only sits at the front and no matter what we do to this bar at the front, it doesn't change the shape through the tree or anything else. This bit of plastic here stays the same shape regardless of what it's doing at the front. So it doesn't alter the shape of the saddle, it doesn't alter the shape from here to here, this stays the same. And these saddles are quite well known for being what we call banana shaped. They like or white and they've got a lot of shapes. So they don't tend to fit really flat back types and another thing is the twist so we can see this here is called the twist of the saddle it's like the narrow part of the tree the bit that sits between your nunu or your private bits this bit here the top of your legs the twist also known as a waist look how narrow it is on some saddles that's three inches four inches like wide this is narrow so that means that these saddles are not going to fit something that's really wide through its back. So I don't mean wide in terms of the width, because we all know that this can go to an extra wide, this one here is an extra wide, but like wide in terms of the spinous processes. So those bits of bones that you can feel by the wither, if they feel wide, e.g. wider than this, then this is not gonna fit it because the tree itself will end up pinching. So yes, these saddles are adjustable. Yes, they're brilliant for that in that sense that they're really adjustable. If you've got a horse that fluctuates between medium wide and wide, medium wide in the winter, wide in the summer, then these are really good because you can change the shape. But the saddle itself has got to fit them. Regardless of their width, the saddle itself has got to fit them. So back to the seat here, foam on top of the plastic tree. And again, this plastic, this tree here is completely unaffected by what goes on at the front. And that's not just these saddles, that's all saddles with the adjustable bar in the front. Adjusting the gullet bar in the front makes no difference whatsoever to the rest of the saddle, only changes the width here. Does that make sense? Does it? So quickly run through again, tree, plastic, foam padding, synthetic material on top, stirrup bars of the hook variety, 
points which have a tendency to break like this one here has so just to be careful and be aware of it and the reason they break is because people don't look after them properly and they bend them too much here's an intact point again cracked the girth straps are synthetic they can crack a little bit you see like this and always worth considering changing them to leather ones. What's really good about these saddles is they're very lightweight. Because they're made out of synthetic materials, there's not a lot of weight to them at all. They're very lightweight saddles. They're because they're synthetic materials, they're dead easy to clean. You can literally hose them down. They're good in that sense that they don't take a great deal of looking after. And these older ones are on that kind of really shaped, banana-y shaped tree, which makes them tend to fit the horses with a bit of a wither and a bit of shape behind their back and quite narrow spinous processes again because this twist here is quite narrow. The newer versions of these, uh, they've changed the tree shape basically on the newer versions of these, so on the newer versions of these the tree shape is a little bit flatter and the panels are a little bit less hard. We're going to get onto the panels in a minute, we're going to first of all very quickly talk about the girthing. Girthing on these saddles is a very very simple three strap girthing system. So we can see here the normal three straps. The first one comes from its own bit of webbing, the second and the third come on um, a shared bit of webbing. So for that reason on these saddles you should never ever use the second and the third together because if anything happens to that bit of webbing your saddle would fall off. So you want to use the first and the second or the first and the third. Usually first and the third is the best option and that second strap is just a spare. Now let's move on to the panels, the squishy bits that sit on your horse's back. These here are the panels. These are the bits that attach to the tree and the seat and the flaps. And this is what sits on your horse's back. So one thing that, we, that we'll all notice is that the panels themselves are quite hard. So again, this is an older Wintech. The newer Wintech have got slightly softer panels, but these panels are quite hard and a little bit kind of unforgiving against the horse's back. The panels themselves are fairly narrow and they don't really distribute the weight across a big area. So again, for that reason, like we're saying about the tree and everything, they're not really suitable for very broad back types. They tend to perch up on the broader back ones. These are more suitable for the horses that don't require a big panel on the bottom. So slightly narrower ribs, slightly narrower back. Now, like I said at the beginning, these are flocked panels, not air panels. So they do do air panels that have four air backs in them. If you happen to be watching this and you happen to have a spare Wintech saddle that's got a little care badge on it, one of these older ones, preferably not the newer ones, because I'll be doing the new ones at a later date, but these older Wintechs with care panels that you don't mind me um, dismantling on TV, YouTube even, then give me a shout and I'll arrange for a career to come and get it. So this is the flock panels, let's have a look inside. Now anyone that's ever seen a saddle dissection from me before, normally we would see that the panel here is stitched up here and we'd unpick the stitching and we'd open the panel up but this doesn't have it in quite the same way so where normally it would have the stitching up here like done by hand this is machine stitch these are all machine made um, and that's how they keep the prices down because you know all these things we're saying about these saddles um, it's because they're really cheap saddles they're like super cheap they're cheap they're lightweight they're easy to look after and they're adjustable so they have lots of plus points so please don't think that I'm saying like oh they're not handmade because obviously they're not if they were they would be much more expensive that's the thing about these saddles is they're cheap so they are going to be made differently than for example a handcrafted English leather saddle let's have a look inside so on the subject of cheap we can see that in here we can see that in here the flocking is pretty cheap it's 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 synthetic, it's not like um, wool, like we would recommend using proper wool in it. It's, it's, it's the cheaper end of flocking. However, if you've seen any of my dissections before, I've done like the really awful saddles, like the Indian leather saddles, and I've dissected them. Have a look at, I'll put a link up to one of them, and you can see the flocking in them, and the flocking in these are, are a whole different world. These are not flocked in that way. They're awful, these are cheap, but not horrific. So yes, it's kind of bits of carpet, but it doesn't smell like death, it doesn't feel like fibreglass, it doesn't make me want to sneeze every time I take a handful out. So yes, it's much cheaper, it's definitely not wool, it's synthetic flocking, and it's quite lumpy, compacted, hard. So the panels themselves, being made out of synthetic material, they don't, you, you can't even feel the lumps through them, does that make sense? So the panel itself is also lined, so we see here, it's got like a foam lining. Let me cut that out. 
but yeah that's foam there and that's that's what the panel is lined with so you have this kind of yeah not very nice but kind of does its job flocking with a foam lining and then you have the panel material it's synthetic so you don't actually really feel any of these lumps and these bumps we would never put this into like a leather panel saddle ever because you would feel the lumps and it would feel horrible because it's on the synthetic panel which hasn't got the same kind of give to it then actually it's not as bad um sometimes we have these in for full reflocks and we do reflock them with the you know, proper wool but we try to make them softer i certainly personally try to flock them softer than they than they are already flocked because they're flocked quite hard and you do want to try and give a little bit of a give to the panel again this is something that wintech have I, th I think taken on board they've oh my god these saddles are so popular they've sold bazillions of them over the years but they have in their more recent designs really taken on board the fact that the panels are getting softer now they are much softer and they've got much more give and they're a broader panel so they fit a wider range of horses including the ones with you know slightly wider backs they've got a few different tree types now so that's good because it means that you can fit them on like the flatter backed horses as well as well as the ones with like that shape back so they have really taken these things on board for sure and I don't want this to sound, I don't want this to sound like I'm being negative because I'm really not being negative because number one I'm not that person you will never hear me bad mouthing another company okay I do bad mouth the Indian saddles but they're not a company they're like a style of saddle aren't they yeah so I don't want this to sound like I'm being negative because I'm not I think there's a place in the market for the Wintex saddles for sure and they are very 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 popular I've done this video so we can look inside one and just see what's inside and yes, what's inside is perhaps flocking that we wouldn't put into a, you know, handmade leather saddle. If my camera keeps bobbling, it's because Pumpkin's chewing the wire. So that's the panel. That's the panel in there. So it's lined with this foam. It's full of this flock. You see there's hundreds of staples here. And that's where the panels are stapled onto the seat. Again, to save money because hand stitching a panel onto a seat takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And therefore the price of the saddle has to increase. Stapling them on much quicker, therefore they can afford to sell them a bit cheaper. Now, do you remember at the beginning we were saying about the point pockets? This is, can you see this little pocket here? Little pocket there. That's what the point sits into. And it's that point that can break. So they're the points that sit into these little pockets. So if you ever do change your gullet bar yourself in your Wintex saddle, make sure you put your points carefully back into the point pocket before you do it up. Because I see so many people that have changed their own gullet bar and then not put the points back in the point pocket or put one in and not the other, that's even worse. And then the saddle doesn't quite sit properly. So these saddles are cheap, um, and they're cheap to sell because they're cheaply manufactured. That doesn't mean they're badly manufactured, they're just cheaply manufactured. So they're stapled instead of sewn. They've got a plastic tree um, with no kind of metal work on it at all, apart from the bar at the front. They've got um, cheap flocking in their panels. They've got the synthetic straps. Um, and they've got cheap materials. You know, it's cheap synthetic material. But that means that they can sell them cheaply. And that, if that's what you're looking for, a cheap saddle, then you can go much worse than a Wintec. I'd much rather somebody get a Wintec than get one of those Indian leather saddles that I described in one of my other videos. Again, I'll try and put a link up because they are hell. These at least are made correctly, albeit very cheaply. And, and they are adjustable. So they are lightweight, they are adjustable, they are often very or very often used on backing horses because they're so light and so adjustable and if the horse was to flip over and mold on it then they probably wouldn't break the tree and you can change the gullet bar yourselves although obviously we recommend that you get a saddle fitter to fit it and to change the gullet bar but please remember that just because they're adjustable it doesn't mean they fit everything now more recently um, Wintech Bates because they're the same company have really addressed loads of these issues not, not issues but like there's a word I'm looking for and I can't think of what it is but they've addressed these things about the saddles that maybe make them a bit less than perfect and they have really changed the newer versions of these and as such we have seen an increase in the price because again making things better costs more money so you do see that reflected in the price but the one thing that I want you to take from this is that adjustable saddles do not fit every horse. There's a, there's a good time for them, there's a good place for them, but just because you can adjust the width, it does not mean they'll love for any horse that you put them on as long as you adjust the width, because that shape of the saddle is the most important. 
Again, if you've got one of these saddles, but the air version, I'd love to have one if you fancy sending it to me so I can do this to it because it'll be really interesting to compare the flopped one versus the air one. Um, so because people are really interested to see what the airbags inside look like. So if you've got one that the airbags have gone on or it's broken or you know, you've cat weed on it or something and you don't want it anymore, then give me a shout and I can arrange to come and get it. If you have any questions about Wintex saddles or any other saddles, then please give me a shout. If you've got any questions about um, the Wintex synthetic saddles versus other synthetic saddles, then also give me a shout because it's something that maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll do like a synthetic saddles comparison video one day. If you've got any ideas like that, then pop a comment below is the best way to do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, dingle dangle dongly bell thing all of that sort of thing i hope you've enjoyed i hope you have learned something I hope you're all staying well staying healthy not getting too fed up of lockdown and the lack of hairdressers and it won't be long the sun will be shining soon the sooner we'll be out with our friends in the pub gardens drinking pims it'll be lovely so take care see you soon lots and lots of love